uh, I just listened to my, my colleague uh, Stefina, which is uh, telling how he came for the first time to Karabakh. At, uh, at it's it's and, like I'm listening my story because in '91 when I I make my master degree on Moscow on Institute of Cinematography and I heard about <coughs> deportation of uh, Armenian village Getashen from Karabakh. This is the the first time when I listen in the, some small group they are talking about uh, this uh, tragedy <coughs> with many many human blood. And uh, I, I stay uh, at, at all night. Uh, I'm thinking about that. And in the morning, I visit uh, Armenian hospital. Um, um, it's the uh, embassy. embassy of Armenia and, and uh, uh, Moscow. They, I ask them if this is true. They say yes. And one week, I read the books about uh, Nagorno Karabakh, about the story, about the people who live there, and I want to find uh, the truth, who is right, and what is this land, to who below this land, and what Armenians have right to, to live there, or uh, who is the owner of, of that land originally. So after one week, I traveled to, from Moscow to Erevan, from Erevan, like Stettina with Yak Sorak, uh, uh, that, that small plane to, to uh, Hodjelu uh, airport. It's again the man who, who just tell that it is a very bad man, the chief of Hodjelu airport, Gajiv. It treat me like I'm uh, the, the worst enemy because I'm coming just from Erevan. There. It's the first my visit. He throw out all my documents, my passports. He don't want to listen to me because I just came from, from Armenia. Finally, I and he's at that time he's so busy because because he's beating he beat one of the Armenians men. After that, I I take time. I I put aside deep my all emotional and all, all my. Um, Human, human emotional, and try to, to speak with him very low and down to explain him. Then I'm the journalist, and I, I'm not an Armenian. He asked me, "You're the Bulgarian Armenian? Why you come here?" And I, I tell him, I, "I'm Bulgarian, and I'm journalist. I'm documentalist. I want to see what's happening." So he put me at the one angle at uh, that airport. Two days I stay at the airport. I wait for they say yes or or not for me, for my visiting, and, and that area. Finally, I, with many explanations, with many um, playing, playing uh, games, maybe, it's the right word, with Azerbaijanian uh, chiefs at Shushi. Again, they took me to Shushi. Then I have a choice to visit Getashen. At that moment, this is the two weeks later after the deportation of Armenian people from Getashen. I saw that that houses, broken houses. I saw that totally destroyed villages with uh, uh, the place when they shooting with the uh, shells, with the guns. And at that moment, they bring 600 Azerbaijanian uh, family to live there and uh, Getashen. And all the time they tell me that it's not Getashen, this is the Chaikent. You must say Chaikent to the Armenian village. So this is my first experience. I make all that, that pictures. I travel to Moscow. I show all these pictures to the international uh, mass media. And after one month, uh, I find the information that they're trying to do the same uh, Oh, the same operation of ring, they say, Operatze Calzo. Mm. Famous Operatze Calzo, it's, uh, it's mean how, how they deportation, how they make deportation of, of the villages. At Xiaomian region. I traveled to Xiaomian one week early. I stay with the people there at Erkech village. And I witnessed how they, they did that operation rings, Calzo. They, in the morning, they're bringing uh, Soviet tanks and uh, helicopters. They took the village like ranks. 
and uh, with the uh, long speakers, they tell to the people to leave it out from the village, and maybe people is, is don't want to leave to move out from the, the village, they, uh, they can kill them. This is it, what a uh, Soviet officer tell to, uh, to them, to the people. I want to uh, tell you, at that moment, uh, Azerbaijanian did that deportation with help of the uh, Soviet army, fourth, fourth Soviet army, which is their basis is Ganja, uh, uh, and uh, This among special military troops of Azerbaijan, which is the most barbarous, the police special troops, the barbarous peoples, and this with Soviet army and among the special military troops Azerbaijanian, they make that operation deporta deportation of Armenian people. I stay with the people three days at, uh, at that rings, and the end of the third days, the people with, uh, with so many scary and that, that depressed, they move, they move out from the village. They cry and the rain. I never forget that that picture when it's rain and people is running by, by foot with the children. And I remember that moment picture from 1915 when Armenians is running uh, from, from Turkey. And uh, I stay at the end of the village. I saw these pictures. I took the, the, the videos and I stay inside in the village with 24 Armenians uh, uh, volunteers which they came just to defend that, that land. I stay with them at that uh, village and they fight with Soviet army. Five hours, we're, we're in that, I don't know, we're going to live and to die. Five hours is that battling. Finally, we, we go out. But I think the gut is with us at that moment. Again, I go to Moscow. I give all that information to the international mass media. And I choose for myself. I say, why I'm doing in Moscow that my dissertation, my master degree, who, who needed that? When the really documentary films is there, no one is taking uh, that document. No one is giving the true and proof to the world. And I stopped my master degree. I returned to Xiaomian region. And I stay with that people. Because I'm like human. I'm respect of them. I respect how this small population is asking just words to listen to them. When I'm going with my camera out from Karabakh, from Xiaomi, and you know what they tell me? Please, Svetana, go tell the world about our story and come back. Of course I came back. I say, my dear people, I came back. I'm also from the small uh, population country of small, small country, Bulgaria. Also, I know what is this Osmani Imperi, Ottoman Imperi to the, my grand-grandparents. And uh, I return to the Xiaomian region. And I stay to the end of the war, to the ceasefire, and until 94. Uh, I want to, very, very quick, I can tell you the situation. And everyone is asking, give it back territory that seven territory which uh, Karabakh people took to, from Azerbaijan. How they can give it back? Why? You, you can imagine, in 92, when Azerbaijan really, that machine, when Soviet Imperium broke out, it's a uh, fall, following. And uh, no more Soviet army, but all these professional people for money go to serve to the Azerbaijani army. And in June 92, Azerbaijan made that bigger uh, aggressive uh, attacks, and they took from North uh, Xiaomian region, they took all Mardakert region, from Gadrut region, they, they took all the Armenian uh, villages, and the rings, it's coming so narrow and narrow to the Karabakh. So, what is the uh, what Karabakh have uh, uh, to do 
they must to take all this territory which is close to them from this territory, from Agdam, from Shushi, from Malebili. There, all day and night, it's rockets, it's bombs to Stepanakert and another uh, region of, of Karabakh. And that moment, uh, Karabakh people, uh, they, they serve about their uh, leave, it's because the uh, question is to die or to live. So they must to take all this territory, these regions, around them, so to live, to have a possibility to live. And they did that by themselves, not war, not our war did something for them, they did. So we must to be respect from them. And 2016 and April, when starting again that four, four days war, we say from, uh, just for four days. But again, all this aggressive Azerbaijanian give us uh, another memory. I, I have that memory from the first, first war. But they give us the, they want to take by, by uh, arms, they want to take, by aggressive, they want to take by Karabakh. So, because from that time, no, no one is uh, giving them that punishing, punishing for them. 2016, it's, uh, it's again reminding for us because aggressive, aggressive, not just speak uh, aggressive uh, intonation, which we saw from Aliyev, from another, uh, from another uh, chiefs of Azerbaijan. They are ready for uh, aggress again and to talk, not to speak, to talk, to talk by arms, Karabakh, back, back to them. So, <clears throat> we have so much things to do today in Karabakh. Uh, believe me, means group, I think he's, uh, they can do their work like, like political <coughs> work. But another human being and humanitarian work, we have a lot, a lot to do with the people from Karabakh. They're, they're nice and very uh, proud people from their story. Um, they have all uh, social, uh, social and uh, de democratic institution and uh, working in Karabakh. They make very clear uh, president election, uh, parliament election. <coughs> they are ready to be part of our civilian uh, world. Just we must to know more about them. And I, one, one another thing I want to say, just like journalist, me and you, like Djibouti, I'm sure you are also on that blacklist of Azerbaijan. Oh, no, don't. No, yeah. <laughs> so this is barbarous uh, and, and ridiculous situation to be in the civilian uh, 21st century and to put someone on the blacklist and to look after him when he's somewhere to arrest him, like Lapshin, like blogger Lapshin, because he, he go to Karabakh, he, he visit Karabakh. So uh, how came? Karabakh is nice country, touristical, very, very beautiful nature. The people is very nice. Uh, they want to be uh, part of this world, and they want to, to listen to you, and you must to visit to Karabakh. And you don't need to be on that black list. You don't need, this is, uh, this is not talking on the civilian uh, uh, dialogue. Um, I'm sure most of you, uh, you're, uh, maybe you never be in Karabakh, but after this listening, it, maybe we can make you more uh, motivated to go on to Sibai. And believe me, you can have the best time in Karabakh with the, that people. I'm proud to know them. I'm proud to continue that uh, uh, my work, and I want to see that uh, that region, Karabakh, with peaceful, with uh, recognition, and uh, they're ready. They're ready for them. I'm I'm sure all my uh, videos and my films, maybe you you see on the YouTube, you're more interesting to know more about that war. I have seven documentary films about the war and the sixth language you can find on the YouTube. But uh, my, my memory like human and my motivation like human be 
uh, today is to continue to top the world from 91, how I promised my people of Karabakh from Xiaomen to continue to do this and today. Uh, let every one of you to be uh, one, one little um, part of Karabakh <laughs> and to have that memory from Karabakh. I'd be very happy to, to see you in, in Karabakh and Armenia. I'm living in Armenia, I live in Armenia, I work in Armenia National TV. I'm doing my weekly program about Karabakh, Karabakh Heroes.